So physical security is very important part from security perspective because we in cybersecurity or in information security, we care about securing data itself. So we care about how to secure data, how to sec do encryption, who, who, how to create fire, or how to install firewalls, install antivirus in our systems and all of this stuff. But physical security is often overlooked. What do we mean by physical security is, for example, securing the premise or securing the building where the data center is, closing the, the door of the rack. So we will not allow anyone to insert a malicious USB, uh, USB card or USB stick that include malicious data, for example. So by having adequate physical security, we can ensure that our data is secured from logical attack as well as from logical attack. And if you don't have a physical security in reality, you don't have any security in place. So physical security comes first, of course. So physical security care about a lot of uh, domains. One of these domains is the security of premise or the zone where our company at, security of data center or server racks, security of power source and power redundancy, and the different threats that could be related to power, such as rapid increase in voltage, rapid decrease in voltage, which both of them can cause a device malfunction, the blackout or uh, the shortage in power, which you could cause in system uh, be, being unusable until power is restored back to the normal current. We have also some environmental related uh, physical security, such as security detectors against fire, against um, smoke and all of these topics. So for environmental control, and first when we discuss the uh, protection against electricity uh, hazard or electricity threats, we can find a lot of types of electricity related threats. One of these threats, for example, is a blackout. And the blackout is power loss. This power loss can be compensated depending on how much we will lose the power. For example, if we are talking about short term power outage, we may use the UBS device. If we are talking about long term, which can last for hours or days, we should rely on a generator to provide us a power. So depending you are dealing with short term or long term, you should select your response regarding to how to deal with blackout. The second type of power threats is the prone out. And prone out is a reduce in voltage. Reducing uh, the reduction in voltage can cause the device to not work properly. If the device does not, do, does not take the enough power to operate, then it might not work at all or work with less capacity. So prone out require a device that could stabilize the power current and to stabilize the voltage. So our device could receive consistent voltage level that allow it to work and do its task in a proper way. SAGS is another kind of reduction in voltage, but it is a rapid reduction in voltage, which means we got our current working like this, and then our current drop down and then restored back to the normal situation. So SAGS and brown out on the longer term can cause devices to uh, be malfunctioned or be completely corrupted. The fourth and the last kind of electricity related threats is the spikes or the surge. And the spike and surge is a rapid increase in voltage. So if I got a high increase in voltage level, and if I don't have a protection, this could cause my device to instantly being corrupted because it received too much power than, it than what is required. So we can see that UBS and generator can be used with blackout, we can see that conditioner can be used when we deal with lower voltage, and we can use the surge protector such as this one in case we got a spike or surge. Okay? So for any data center, we should have a power source that is providing this data center with power. And these power sources are managed by the technician team, which are related to electricity. So we need to make sure that the power equipment such as UBS, such as the power control panel, are accessible only to authorized people. 
and located in an area where only authorized people can access. And this area should be isolated from actual data center because we do not need any every time that uh, technicians or uh, uh, electricity engineers when they do their regular checkup or maintenance for the power lines or power equipment to access the actual data center which includes the data because maybe some of this function is being made by a third party so we need to make sure that only authorized people can have access to the data center and when we isolate power from data center or power room from data center, this would provide more extra security for data center by giving the opportunity only to IT people to access the data center, the authorized one, of course. By default, not everybody from IT team should be allowed as well to access the data center. Power sources need to be redundant. We need to have powers from different circuits to, compens to compensate the loss in case we got power outage from one circuit, we will get another one that is working. And the power switches that are in uh, your power panel or in the panel should be properly labeled and should be documented. You should have a diagram or a plan that explain to uh, uh, the team how power is being uh, provided to the different data center, which switch is responsible for rack number one. I'm, call, I'm talking here about power switch and you should have a kind of emergency light. And for power room also, you need to uh, use a special fire suppression system. So power room, which include UBS, include generator, include power panel or control panel for power system, should have all as well kind of uh, smoke detector fire suppression system. And this fire suppression system should be uh, adequate or relevant to the asset that we are trying to protect. What do I mean here? We cannot use water. For example, we should use a special material which can uh, deal with electricity uh, hazards, as you said. Yeah. So for environmental control as well, we need to have kind of detection inside our data center to ensure that whenever we got a, a water leakage, we can detect this leakage. So from where could we have a water leakage inside our data center? Well, we may have a re multiple reasons for water leakage. One of it, uh, defected pipe. This is a viable option. Also, if the data center is at the uh, top floor of the building, which is not the recommended because placing your data center at the top floor of the building can make your, uh, your data center actually subject to many issues. The first issue would be the rain and water that could be leaked because of the rain if the ceiling is not properly isolated. That's one. Second one, when we got a fire, the fire is usually the flames are going to the above or top. So the flames are raising and that makes the data center more subject to being infected by this fire if this fire started from the first uh, floor or second floor or something like this is also another another one and also uh, uh, what uh, blessing data center in the highest floor will make it subject to direct sunrise which will, requ will require uh, you to install a stronger uh, air conditioner in order to try to stabilize the heat or the temperature of this data center. So actually, when we think about what is the proper location for data center in your building, if you have an option to select the floor, we should not recommend the last one because all what I just mentioned. And also, I could not recommend the, uh, the ground floor because ground floor may be subject to flood may be subject to physical attacks because it is the first floor or essentially there is no ladders, there is no control in case you want to access it. So first floor, second floor will be okay for the center. Anyway, water leakage can be because of we are in the last floor, could be because of we have a leakage in pipe and also we could have a malfunction air condition. So we could have an air condition that is malfunction and because it is a corrupted air condition, the water or the uh, cold air is being uh, somehow turning to a water. Okay, so the 
That's right. So in this situation, we need to have a detector that can detect the leaking power even if this power was a few drops. And this system looks like this. So essentially, it is like a sensor. And this sensor has a cable. And you extend this cable under the air condition, under the ceiling, under the vibe of the air condition. And whenever any uh, drop of water is sensed by this cable, it will close the circuit and send an alarm that there is a water leakage. So you could be notified about malfunction air condition more faster. You could be notified about possible leakage of water because of rain and all of these locations. And some, such a sensors, locations of these sensors should be properly documented and considered to provide it with a redundant power. So when you power your servers using UBSs, you need also to consider the sensor, the sensor in the same way. And this, this sensor could be tested from time to time. You should test these sensors uh, to ensure it is working properly. Uh, of course, to not drain a lot of water inside or on, on top of it, of course, but at least make sure that sensor is active and sending alarm. Okay. We have another kind of environmental control, which could be the smoke detector. And the smoke detector is a kind of detector that detects the smoke. In any fire, we have multiple stages for the fire. One of the first stages of the fire is that the heat, or somehow uh, we have got some heat, and this heat change the air ionization. So it, it make a change in the air, but still no smoke. But maybe we can smell the uh, first indicators that there could be like a burn or a burning, something is burning or a fire. And then we go to the second level, which is the smoke. And after the smoke, we will see the flame. So smoke detector can either detect the change in air ionization due to a fire or detect the smoke and can give you an alarm so it can trigger the fire suppression system to work. Okay. So the next type or the next security uh, that you want to consider for your data center is the security of your power line. We all have first the floor in our data center. What could be the reason why we use rest the floors in our data center? Yeah, rest the floor is a kind of fake floor, as you can see. That's right. And why do we need to raise rack from actual ground? There, is, there are a lot of benefits by the way for doing so. One of these benefits is usually we do not implement in data center standalone air condition system. We use a central air conditioning system and usually the uh, exit or uh, the space that distributes this air is placed or the devices that distribute this air is the is installed under the rest of the floor so we have like pipes and these pipes are uh, generating or have the airflow coming from it as we can see here on the screen second why uh, second reason why we could need to uh, raise the racks from the floor is to we need to stretch the power and data cable under the rest of the floor so we can have more organization okay Third reason that either air condition or power cable or uh, the server itself could uh, have a fire or could have an issue that could lead to a fire. Rest the floor act as like an isolation layer between the elements on the bottom or under the rest, the rest of the floor and elements on top of rest of the floor. So if we got a fire under the rest of the floor, the rest of the floor is designed to absorb this fire for like one hour, two hour, until the fire suppression system maybe under the rest of the floor can work and can terminate or neutralize this fire. And the opposite is okay. That's right. That's right. When we design rest the floor or select rest the floor, we need to consider a lot of aspects, such as do we need our rest the floor to be fire resistant or not? There are kind of rest the floor which is fire resistant, and some other rest the floor types are not. 
and for how much time we want our raised floor to absorb the fire. Okay. Yeah, but be, depend on how duration or how long I want to do so, the more specification will be needed to raise the floor and as a result, more the cost. For example, in data centers, you need to build a wall that has a special thickness level that could absorb the heat or absorb the fire for like four hours, six hours. I cannot recall the time exactly, but such a specification should be considered. Okay, and as you have uh, like fire suppression system on the top of the floor, you should consider the smoke detector, water detector, and the fire suppression system under the raised floor as well. So, correct. So, fire suppression system can be based on water, such as sprinkles, and can be also based on gas, such as the FM200. And the reason why we have two options that for data center or for server or data center related fire incidents, we cannot use water to suppress this fire because we are dealing with electrical component or IT component. So IT component surely will get defected if, we, if this material got released by mistake. So for IT component, we use a special material called FM200. And in fact, we had it, across the history of this topic, we had a lot of material that can help in uh, countering fires to uh, information system components. One of these uh, material was, was, uh, I, I, was, I believe, carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide removes the oxygen from the air. So as a result, the fire will not get enough fuel to be uh, or to work. So at the end, carbon dioxide will counter the fire. But the problem with carbon dioxide is that we cannot release it in a, a, a manned area or an area that include human or include people. So before releasing fire suppression system based on carbon dioxide, we need to assure, ensure that there is no so, nobody exists from the facility inside it. Okay, we have what is called argonal gas and it was mixture, I believe, from halon gas and nitrogen or nitrogen and oxygen. And also it includes oxygen, but it can cause uh, health problems as well. So at the end, we got these two options, sprinkles or FM200. I believe FM200 is different than the material we use in the standalone file suppression system, the cylinder that we can carry and counter the fire. But FM200 is a colorless gas, it is odorless, it, it leaves no signs. So once we got like a, a fire, it, is be, it can be released, it is safe on IT equipment, it does not hurt the ozone layer. We got another kind of fire suppression system called halon gas, and halon gas had a bad impact or bad effect on the ozone gas in uh, the uh, uh, aerial uh, yeah, something like this. So FM200 is a type of fire suppression system that we use in IT. And we can see cylinders of air of FM200 looks like this. Okay. And when we design our fire suppression system, we need to consider which elements this fire suppression system is trying to address. So if we are talking about IT or power equipment, we should consider something such as FM200. If we are dealing with a store, warehouse, uh, wood, wood related uh, or paper related uh, fire, then water will be fine. So, and always uh, uh, remember that in physical security, the human safety comes first. So, we need to consider human safety above of all. So, in case we have an emergency door, for example, this emergency door should always be opened or can be opened from inside the building, for example. So, we can allow people inside this building to evacuate the building, to not look yeah we may find in some situation the emergency door is locked uh, by a lock this is not uh, a valid option here however uh, organization do such something like this because they are afraid that someone from outside may manage to open this door from outside however we when we design the emergency exit door we uh, design this door to only be opened from inside okay 
So uh, physical security also is concerned uh, about access control and access control is kind of doors that use badges, use fingerprint or pin code to allow you to enter the facility. And we have different kinds of access control. One of this control is the design that you have here, which avoid or prevent you from uh, being followed by someone who could use your access to enter the facility which will protect you from the piggybacking attack. Piggybacking attack is a kind of attack, physical attack, where someone will follow the other one to gain access using his same ID card. So in this situation, we have space that can uh, hold only someone to use the card and then enter a location and then use the card a second time to enter the building. We, have, we should also, for any location in our data center or in our uh, or in general, any sensitive location in our building should not be declared or we should not, for example, write a sign on the data center that this is a data center. We could only leave a sign that this area is restricted and only authorized people should present in this area. We have also this kind of security door, which is the turn steel, and it essentially uh, control who can access the building and reduce the amount of who can access the building within a specific time. Also, it can work as anti uh, tailgating or piggybacking as well, because it essentially same idea at the end. Okay. This, this design as well is one of the designs that could be related to physical security, and it is called the man trap design the man trap design is similar to this one by the way this is also a man trap hello okay but yeah and what could be the reason for this design of man trap it could be used in a warehouse for example and you are receiving goods from uh, different suppliers so instead of allowing suppliers to uh, discharge the goods inside the warehouse itself you have like a controlled area where the supplier enter with the goods and then you inspect the goods here and you sign uh, the acceptance or the receiving uh, paper and then when the supplier go out of this area and close the door this door will be opened and you can enter the data so man trap as a concept can be applied in multiple ways or in multiple techniques DMZ, for example, if we need to go far uh, mile deeper or extra mile deeper, uh, DMZ, which we were discussing yesterday, consider the same aspect, by the way. We have firewall and other firewall, and in between we have the published service. So if we have a virus that infected this machine, we can uh, limit this attack inside this area only. Okay, so although it is purely logical uh, or physical security concept, but it can also be applicable in the logical security. So access control is uh, uh, utilize some of the magnetic elements in, in the doors to control who can access uh, a specific office or a specific building. At the end, the access control reader, which you can read the bin or biometric data or card, is at the end connected by a server. And on this server, we have the option to identify which card or which card number is allowed to access which door in the organization. Clear? So in, yeah. so in case of outage of this system, nobody will be allowed to access the building and the door will stay locked. So we need to consider that from inside to have some kind of exit button. So we can allow that man we can manually open the door from inside to help evacuating anyone inside this building or inside this office. Okay, and of course the magnetic lock or uh, the door lock such as this one, it uses power uh, source to keep the uh, uh, the door locked. So we need to consider to have like a UBS and this UBS would provide like. Uh, let's say will provide like uh, a redundant power to keep this door open even if we got a power outage. And in case somebody is inside, to keep this door uh, closed, sorry. And in case we have somebody inside, he can, let's say, exit using uh, this exit button. 
So that take us to other concept in when we uh, develop uh, the security in, 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 or define the fail policy of different security controls, which is the fail open and fail close. In case of access control system, such as this one, when we uh, design, design our access control system, that in case of power outage or system outage, to open all the doors inside the organization to allow people to evacuate the building. This is an example for a fail open design. So fail open indicates that control will not be effective in case the control failed. So if the access control server went down, then the, all the doors controlled by this access control server will be opened. OK, but fail close is a different term. Fail close means if the system went down or power went down, everything will maintain its security. So the doors will remain closed. The problem in this situation is if this design is implemented in office area. So when we got a system outage or power outage, all the doors will be stay locked and people will be trapped inside. OK. Yeah, that's right. But we are not here talking about switch only, but also what about the, uh, I will give you an example about what is fail secure just right now, but between the fail safe or fail open, which in other term called the fail safe, while fail close mean, uh, or, or there is another synonym to fail close, which is fail secure. And the difference is illustrated here. In fail safe, when we have power outage, the system will unlock itself. But in fail secure, when we have power outage, the system will stay closed to protect the data inside. So based also in the type of building or type of office or type of this from physical security perspective, we can to, to choose in our access control system that for the data center door, for example, the door should be remain closed. But for office and exit and entry building for the building, the door can be opened automatically. So we can define so something like this from the access control system itself. Clear? Another example for fail secure and fail close. Do we remember when we were discussing the sandbox? So here in my sandbox settings on my own device, I have an option to use sandbox by, 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 or by clicking this option here, I have an option to write the IP address of the sandbox server. So whenever my device receives suspicious data or suspicious um, file, it will send it to the sandbox server, right? I could have an option to implement this sandbox in fail secure mode. Can we understand or can we read and elaborate what do we mean by this specific line? That's correct. That's correct. As the system is down and didn't respond to us back by the result of file analysis of the sandbox file or the file sent to sandbox, the file will not be accessible. To keep us safe or to stay or to stay in the safe side. Okay, so here if I remove this option and I could I had the sand, sandbox configured, at the same time I would be implementing the fail open. So in case sandbox is not reachable, the file will be executed as long as the sandbox doesn't respond. So this is also another example. So we have some extra guidelines related to physical security. One of it is to not advertise the location of sensitive locations in your building. You should have a control, the single entry point. So you should have a single door or a single entry to your data center or to your building in general or to your premise. Because if you have multiple entry points, this could require more effort in securing it. And what apply in physical security is also applicable on logical security. If we have an organization will, with multiple branches in the same country, for example, and we have a headquarter, it would be better to provide internet service from the headquarter only. 
and the limit internet connection at each one of these branches. So if we have HQ, which has like internet connection, other branches will be connected to this HQ over VPN tunnel. And in case anybody from these branches need to reach internet, the branch itself does not have direct access to internet. It should go from HQ. What was the reason for doing something like this? Because if I have single entry point from logical perspective as well, I could uh, make good investment and make a single control or a control a single firewall instead of going to 20 firewalls and configure each one of them in a separate way, as well as yeah, manage and track and monitor. Also, we need to ensure that emergency exit only all can be open from inside in case we have an emergency exit in our physical security. We need to consider the security of ventilation system. So it is not only enough to uh, secure power, but also air conditioning unit, which keep or stabilize the level of temperature in data center need to be considered and need to be secured. If you have CCTV logs and you should have, you need to uh, uh, store these retentions for good period. And the period will be defined by business requirements. And if there is legal or regulation requirements, force you to store logs in general or CCTV tracks for a certain duration. In some kind of industry uh, or uh, according to the country that we are working in, we could find there is some regulation or requirement by law to store the logs for a particular time or a particular duration. So in this situation, or in, in this case, I should store the logs for time or for like one year. So you need, of course, longer is better, but you need to consider capacity and the storage and what is the requirement for storing these logs. For workstations or devices, you need also to consider to use workstation logs to ensure that data inside these workstations cannot be leaked out. Or in other words, nobody would be able to open or deassemble the computer device and steal the hard drive or memory and extract the data from it. So that concludes the part related to the physical security.